Hello, I'm Dr Quinlan and I'm one of the biology teachers at Grace High School and today I'm going to take you through one of our trickier problem solving skills which is answering experimental design questions. Most people are normally super at telling us what makes a good experiment so they can talk about three important things um, but when it comes to answering questions on them they find it quite tricky. So today what we're going to do is we're going to break them down and we're going to look at how you put them into practice in a question. Okay, so to make a good experiment, there are three things you really need to think about very carefully. You need to think about variables. So that's going to be the variable you choose to change, the variable you choose to measure, and the variables that you choose to keep the same. So for a good experiment, most people can tell you, you change one variable and everything else stays the same. And that makes the experiment valid. Okay. The second thing that's really important with an experiment is you've got to repeat it. If you don't repeat the experiment, how do you know you've got good results? Okay. If you repeat an experiment 10 times and get the same results, then you can be pretty sure that your experiment is quite reliable. Okay. So you repeat the experiment to make the results more reliable. Finally, most good experiments in biology should have a control. Okay. So a control is an experiment that you set up to compare your experimental results. Um, to one where you've taken away the independent variable and it's fair to show that what you're changing is actually having the effect. So we're going to get started um, and we're going to have a look at a question. Now I'm going to acknowledge that we've taken this question from the SQA 2019 National 5 Exam Biology Question Paper and it is from Section 2 and it's Question 3 that we're using. OK, so what you need to do to get started with any experimental question is, first of all, you must read the question really carefully and you've got to identify the aim. And then from the aim, you've got to work out what is the independent variable and what's the dependent variable. OK, so the independent variable is the variable that you're choosing to change. So I change the independent variable. You've got the I there to help you remember that. And then the dependent variable is the variable you measure and you record down for your results. So it's the one that's being changed because of your independent variable. Okay, quite unusual, quite difficult to kind of follow there, but when you see it in a question, it's a lot easier. So this is the question we're going to use today. It is taken from the SQA 2019 National Five Biology paper, and it's question three. And um, when you look at one of these questions, they're quite overwhelming. There's a lot of information, there's diagrams, there's text to read. Um, and then there's normally a table of results as well. So you need to kind of filter that information. And the most important thing that you need to do at the start is you need to identify the aim. And then from the aim, you'll be able to answer all the other questions. OK, so the most important thing is you read the question and you identify the aim. So what's the aim of this investigation? And generally, it will be a sentence that says something like to investigate the effect of something on something. So when you read this question here, you can see that sentence just there saying it's an investigation into the effectiveness of different enzymes on the volume of juice. OK, so the aim is going to be to investigate the effectiveness of different enzymes in the volume of just produced. OK, and then once you've identified that aim, everything else gets a lot easier to do. The second thing you need to be able to do really before you start answering the questions is you need to identify the independent and the dependent variables. OK, so when you have your aim, that's quite easy to do, actually. So the independent variable, remember, I change the independent variable. So it's the one the student is choosing to change. And then the dependent variable is one that's being measured for the results at the end. So for this one here, you would talk about it to be to investigate the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So looking at our statement here, it's an investigation into the effectiveness of different enzymes on the volume of juice produced. So your independent variable taken from the aim is the effectiveness of the different enzymes, and then your dependent variable will be the volume of juice produced. So now that you have done that, we can start looking at how you answer the other bits. So this is a really typical question that they would ask you to give two variables that have to be kept constant to make the experiment valid. Now, if they're asking you to speak about a valid experiment, then you've got V for valid, and that should trigger V for variable. So that's what you need to be talking about. Now, you need to be quite careful when you pick, um, because you can't use anything that's in the question. They won't give you the mark for that. So if you look here, 
they've told you that they've used 30 grams of apple pulp. So you can pick that as something that you would keep constant because they're already telling you they're keeping that constant. And similarly, you can say that you're going to keep the volume of the enzymes the same between them either because they've already told you that too. And finally, you can't pick time either because they've already told you that they're going to do it for 30 minutes. OK, so what you need to do is you need to look at the question. You need to identify what they've said they're keeping constant. And then you need to decide what else could they do? What else could they keep constant? OK, so there are quite a few things you could pick with this. Um, and there's like a wee checklist that you can run through. So for this one here, here's some of the examples of things that you could keep constant. You could keep the temperature or the pH of the pulp or the enzymes or the solution constant. You could keep the concentration of the enzymes the same. You could use the same species of apple and you could have the same length of time when you're blending or pulping it. So these are all things that you could control for this particular experiment. Um, and it varies from question to question, which is why students find it so difficult to answer. Now, here are ones that I would say, generally speaking, check for these. Have they included masses? Have they included volumes of liquids? Have they included concentrations of liquids? Have they looked at the length of time? Or the temperature of the solutions? Have they looked at the pH of the solutions? So generally from that list there, there'll be two that you can pick that we haven't mentioned in the question um, and you're just looking for examples that they haven't used. Okay, so these are things you have to keep the same because if you change them they could affect your results. Right, the next typical question is, is this experiment reliable? Now remember, you repeat the full experiment for each enzyme to make the results more reliable. So looking at this question, what do you think? Is it reliable? Well, look at this wee bit here. It says that the procedure was repeated. So the second you see any indication that that's been repeated or they've taken an average, it means that it's going to be a more reliable experiment. OK, so you always talk about repeats for reliability. So this one, yes, it is actually reliable because they've repeated the full experiment for every enzyme. Okay. Right, another one that they can ask is to do with controls. So they can do this two ways. They can either ask you, they can have it set up like this one here, um, where experiment B is a control, and they could ask you, what's the purpose of putting B in there? Um, or they can omit the control and ask you to describe one. So there's two different ways they can talk about control. Now, for the controls, what you need to do again is you need to look at the independent variable. And basically, a control is an experiment where you remove that independent variable. So for this one here, remember, we identified it right at the start that your independent variable is the effectiveness of the different enzymes. So we're changing enzymes. So what you need to do for a control is you need to remove enzymes and you need to have one that doesn't have any enzymes there and you need to be able to use that to show that when there's no enzymes there there's not as much juice produced okay so for d experiment d is a control it allows you to compare the effectiveness of the different enzymes with one that doesn't have the enzymes present and from that it shows you the effect the enzymes are having on the volume of juice produced the other way they can ask this question is that they can ask you to describe a suitable control so they can give you one that maybe had A, B and C, but B wasn't there. And then they would just say, how would you set up a control for this? So the best way to do this and the quickest way to do this is to say that you set up the experiment exactly as described in the question, but you remove the independent variable. So for this one here, a suitable control would be to set up the experiment exactly as described above but without any enzyme added to the pulp. Or you could say with one mill of water added to the pulp instead of one mill of enzyme. So you're getting along across the idea that you know that the enzyme has to be removed because that's independent variable. OK, so the final one we're going to do is that'll be the final question in any experimental question. And it asks you to draw a suitable conclusion. It can be a really tricky one to do um, because there's quite a lot of stuff you have to do to get the mark for it. So where students normally go wrong with it is they don't match their conclusion to the wording of the aim. And it's incredibly important that you do. So it all goes back to identifying that aim to begin with. OK, so remember, our aim for this one was an investigation into the effectiveness of the different enzymes and the volume of juice produced. So our conclusion needs to talk about effectiveness of different enzymes. It needs to talk about volume of juice produced. Okay, 
and you must make sure that your wording is matching that of your aim. The other thing you need to make sure about is that your, your conclusion is actually matching the results as well. So you need to look at the results and there will be different options for the conclusion. Um, I think for this one, what's a really obvious one is that pectinase is producing a far larger volume of apple juice than the other enzymes. Okay? So a really good conclusion here would be that pectinase is the most effective of these enzymes at extracting juice from um, the fruits or from the apple pulp. But pectinase is the most effective enzyme at producing the largest volume of juice. OK, you might decide that amylase actually produces very little juice and you might decide that you're going to pick that one instead and you talk about it being the least effective. So that would be fine as well, as long as your wording matches the aim and as long as your wording matches what the results actually show you, you'll be absolutely fine with it. It's a really tricky one and it takes a lot of practice to get it right. Um, but if you identify that aim at the start, it makes everything so much easier. OK, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope it's been useful. You can always come and see me or get in touch if you've got any questions. Um, and it's one really I would just say practice, 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 and you will get really good at it. Um, your biology teacher will be able to give you lots and lots of practice questions for these. It's one we do a lot in class, um, and we certainly appreciate seeing people doing them at home as well. So if you're wanting to take some home, we can give you big bits full of them for you to go and practice. Um, and just get in touch if you need any help with it. Right, thank you very much. Bye.